Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I'm in New Jersey right now, and I'm going to be at a beach on Delaware Bay, not too far from Cape May, where horseshoe crabs are going to be coming in under a full moon and a high tide at night to breed. These incredible creatures have been on this planet for over 480 million years. And guess what? they appear to be in decline in many places. And that is a scary prospect if you think about it. Here's a species that has been on the planet for 480 million years, and now it's in trouble? That's a scary thought. I'm gonna do three episodes. This is gonna be part one of a three-part episode on horseshoe crabs, and we're gonna look at this living fossil, what that means, and try to figure out what is going on with the population right now? What has put them at risk? In part two, we're gonna look at the biology of horseshoe crabs and discuss what they're really related to, because it's not crabs. And in part three, we're gonna look at and answer the question, how do you tag a horseshoe crab? So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. It's after 11 p.m. on this beach near Cape May, New Jersey, on the Delaware Bay, and I'm here with the American Littoral Society's annual horseshoe crab tagging event. Please see details about this event in my description. So I'm observing and really overwhelmed by this incredible phenomena, the mating ritual of the horseshoe crab that has been repeated on nights of full moon and high tide in the spring for literally millions and millions of years. You can see these females coming ashore to lay eggs, and you can see the males, which are a little bit smaller, competing for that right to fertilize the female's egg. The horseshoe crab is known as a living fossil because it has gone seemingly 480 million years with minimal discernible changes throughout its fossil record. It's difficult to comprehend that length of time that existed on the planet. I can hardly wrap my brain around that. More than 200 million years before the age of dinosaurs, if that helps give you some perspective. Horseshoe crabs have survived four of the world's five major mass extinction events, including a mass extinction event that killed 96% of marine life. And guess what? The horseshoe crab was in the 4% of those survivors. Hey, it's pretty startling and pretty scary to think that this is a species that has survived 480 million years, crazy inhospitable extinction events that killed practically everything, and now it's at risk. <laughs> now, what have we done? 1990s saw a 90% decline in the American horseshoe crab population. Fortunately, thanks to the great insight of the Atlantic States Marine Fishing Commission, they interfered, they stepped in with a horseshoe crab management plan. Since this plan was put into force, there's been a rebound in the population of the American horseshoe crabs. They're actually just one of the four horseshoe crab species worldwide. And with the Asian species, the next major one, is already in decline. In 2016, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature put these blue-blooded American horseshoe crabs, Limulus polyphemus, on the vulnerable list. How can this species be possibly threatened now? Think about it. After all it survived over the last 480 million years, and now in just the last 50 or so, the population is so damaged and so pressured that the species is at risk today. So what exactly are the causes of this scary decline? Early pressure on the population of the horseshoe crabs that nobody really cared about was from, and still is, from commercial eel and conch fisheries. Strangely enough, apparently, a half a female horseshoe crab in the trap is by far, hands down, the most effective, best bait for both attracting eels and conches. There's nothing like it. <laughs> Who knew? 
but by far the biggest strain on the population is the pharmaceutical industry that harvests the horseshoe crabs for their blue blood. Yeah, the horseshoe crabs have blue blood. This blood is blue because its hemoglobin-like compounds that carry oxygen contain copper rather than iron like the hemoglobin in our blood. Reportedly, horseshoe crab blood may sell for as much as $60,000 per gallon, making it one of the most expensive fluids in the world. <laughs> Why does it have such value? Horseshoe crab blood contains the most sensitive indicator of bacteria in the world. Can 480 million years of evolution be wrong? There is no substance in the world better or more sensitive to the presence of harmful bacteria. This compound, in uh, added to virtually any medical thing, is vital in identifying bacterial contaminants on the medical equipment such as artificial joints, pacemakers, and virtually every batch of vaccines. It is absolutely amazing. And so you can think that it, there's a good chance that a horseshoe grab saved your life. Along with habitat degradation, climate change, and red tides, this population is at risk today. And it's really, really scary for me to think that we can mess up the earth so bad and put such pressure on a species that it survived this 480 million years and multiple extinction events. Is this how bad our planet is today? It certainly gives you pause, doesn't it? It's certainly something for us to really think about and try to wrap your brain around and really try to comprehend. So stay tuned for part two, the biology and the lineage of horseshoe crabs. In part three, where I'll talk about how to tag a horseshoe crab, why they're tagging horseshoe crabs, and what efforts are being made to mitigate both the harvest of horseshoe crabs for the bait industry and for pharmaceutical demands and how we might replace something else besides a horseshoe crab in both those industries. Well, thanks for watching part one of this three-part series on horseshoe crabs. In part two, I'm gonna talk about the biology of horseshoe crabs and figure out what are they actually related to because it's not crabs. Part three, we'll look at how to tag horseshoe crabs. Remember, if you like what I do, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from viewers. And remember, I cover everything from horseshoe crabs to fungi to snails and mollusks, millipedes, centipedes, lizards, amphibians, reptiles. I cover it all. Check out my channel and check out my playlists. Thanks for watching this episode of nature at your door.